What's up, everybody? This is the Sports League Podcast with your host, Alex Leak. This is the 2023 NFL Preseason Week 1 Recap. Let's get into it. Thursday night, we had the Texans at the Patriots. Um, Mac Jones did not play. Uh, do we agree with Bill Belichick's decision not to play Mac Jones in the preseason? Uh, you know, I mean... It, has Mac Jones done enough to prove himself in New England? That's an interesting question. You know, a lot of Patriot fans like Bailey Zappi. Um, so, I would be playing Mac Jones in the preseason. I don't see it as, a, you know, the end of the season if Mac Jones goes down. You got Bailey Zappi. You, you're still evaluating Mac Jones, in my opinion. Maybe he'll play in the preseason week two or week three. Uh, but he didn't play in week one. So Bailey Zappi got, you know, more of the the opportunity. Uh, and he looked good in the process. You know, Bailey Zappi looks like a good backup with borderline starter potential. You know, and he played well when he got opportunities to play last year as a rookie. Uh, the big story in this game was C.J. Stroud, Texans rookie quarterback, uh, getting his opportunity to play. Um, second overall pick, and he comes out and, uh, you know, struggles a little bit, uh, gets sacked, uh, pressured again, um, third and 21, and he throws an interception to safety Jalen Mills, a rookie mistake, kind of stared down the receiver. Uh, Jalen Mills, a veteran, read the quarterback's eyes, jumped the route, and picked it off. Um, these are learning experiences. It's better to have a bad interception in preseason if you're C.J. Stroud than to do it in week one when it when it matters, when it counts. So I don't have an issue with these rookie quarterbacks, which most of them did struggle, uh, you know, early on, you know, in preseason week one, but that's fine with me. I'd rather, you know, they take their lumps in the preseason than the regular season. That's why the preseason is still valuable. Um, Patriots rookie Christian Gonzalez uh, got a, his welcome to the NFL moment as Nico Collins runs him over, trucks him for the first down. Um, and so, you know, all these guys are getting their first experience of the NFL, you know, football here in the preseason, the, all the rookies. And so it's cool to see they're learning on the fly, you know, and uh, they'll be better because of it. Uh, the preseason is definitely valuable in that way. Um, Devin Singletary goes from the Bills to the Texans. He had a nice uh, jump cut uh, to avoid a tackle in the backfield, uh, get some positive you know, pick up a first down. Um, so he's going to be valuable there for the Texans. Um, C.J. Stroud, preseason debut, two for four with 13 yards and interception, two rushes for six yards. Some mistakes to clean up, but you also see the potential, you know. Uh, to me, in my opinion, he was the most pro-ready um, of the rookie class, you know, and... Uh, I, I like C.J. Stroud. He was my quarterback number one coming out. So, you know, no need to panic. No need to overreact. Be patient. Um, I think all of us expect C.J. Stroud to start week one. But, I mean, Davis Mills is a, is a good backup quarterback with starter experience. Starting quarterback experience. So... You know, I don't know. I mean, I would consider... We'll see how C.J. Stroud looks in week two, week three of the preseason. I think he's going to be the guy, you know, but um, there's no need to rush these guys in, especially when you got a guy like Davis Mills. I mean, you don't really have that option in Indy with Anthony Richardson, who's already been named the starter. You don't have that option in Carolina with Bryce Young, who's already been named the week one starter. I mean, who are you going to start over him, you know? So, um, Davis Mills is really the, the best option there, but I get it. I get wanting to play C.J. Stroud as soon as possible. 
Uh, you got now a, a solid two-headed running back attack there in Houston with Damian Pierce and Devin Singletary. I like that. Nico Collins is probably going to be your number one wide receiver. Uh, John Mechie, Robert Woods. Um, rookie Xavier Hutchinson. And a guy who flashed and showed out in this preseason game is rookie uh, third-round pick wide receiver Tank Dell out of Houston, out of the University of Houston. And he was balling in this game. Um, he was the best playmaker on the Texans uh, in this game. Uh, you know, doing work out there. Also, Patriots undrafted rookie Malik Cunningham with a nine-yard touchdown run makes multiple defenders miss on the way. Um, not a lot of people probably know that Malik Cunningham was an absolute baller in college at Louisville. I mean, he combined for nearly 4,000 yards and 39 touchdowns in 2021. And in... Uh, Combined for 4K and 39 touchdowns in his career at Louisville. Rushed for over 1,000 yards and 20 touchdowns in 2021. So, dude is an athlete, that's for damn sure. I think he, he broke Lamar Jackson's rushing touchdown record. So that tells you how big of a, how great of an athlete Malik Cunningham is. Um, and so, something to keep an eye on in New England is, uh, you know, you got Mac Jones, you got Bailey Zappi, now you got Malik Cunningham. Uh, you got him undrafted, and he's, you know, I think Bill Belichick won't be patient, won't, you know, force Malik Cunningham to be a quarterback, right? I think Malik Cunningham is going to get some opportunity as a rookie to just be a playmaker, to be like a um, goal line or red zone option quarterback, you know, uh, come in with some end of rounds, some gadget plays, maybe even throw him the ball a play or two, you know, stuff like that to get him involved out there. Uh, Bill Belichick's never shied away from using athletes in his offense and and uh, getting them to, you know, potential, getting them opportunities to, to show off their skill set. Keon White, the rookie, uh Defensive end had a had an excellent debut for the Patriots. Um, I really like Keyshawn Butte, the sixth round wide receiver at LSU. Um, so we'll see. I mean, the AFC East is a very interesting division this year. Uh, the Jets just adding Dalvin Cook, the Dolphins adding Jalen Ramsey, uh, the Bills. You know, being the Bills, it's a very, very competitive, very tough division. And we're going to see the Patriots in most people's minds are expected to finish last place. And uh, I get the feeling they're going to be more competitive this year than they were last year. And people forget the Patriots almost were a game away, a win away from making the playoffs last year. So... And I think that there's no way they do any worse with Matt Patricia and Joe Judge calling play, offensive plays last year or being the offensive co coaches. Get out of here with that. That was a failed mistake. That was miserable and terrible. Now they get Bill O'Brien. That's definitely an upgrade. Hopefully you see a better Mac Jones this year. Um, and the Patriots did just add veteran running back Ezekiel Elliott. And uh, so he can be running back two behind Ramondre Stevenson. He can be your short yardage and red zone running back. And Zeke Elliott, I mean, he had uh, some really good, uh, I mean, he was productive last year. Everyone forgets. People act like he, you know, Zeke isn't in his prime anymore. So people just assume he's washed. But... He's not. He's still got skills. And uh, I tweeted it today. I said, where is that shit? I got to find it real quick. But, or it was yesterday that I tweeted it. But I said, people are acting like Zeke didn't combine for nearly a 1,000 yards and 12 rushing touchdowns just last season. 
You know, he's still a solid running back, too. And uh, definitely can bring value to New England, whether as a change of pace back, short yardage back, red zone, pass blocking, locker room leadership, help be a veteran to Ramondre Stevenson. Very valuable in that regard. So I like that a lot for the Patriots. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to be a better team this year. Now, will it show up in the win-loss department with such a tough division? We'll have to wait and see. Um, let's go Vikings-Seahawks. A lot of talk about the running back situation uh, with Dalvin Cook being released. So now it's up to Alexander Madison and Ty Chandler. Ty Chandler actually had a decent game, combines for 70 yards. You know, uh, did his thing out there. He's a good, he's a running back number two. He looks like it. The question is, is Alexander Madison a running back number one? Or is he kind of a running back two as well? So we'll see how well Alexander Madison does this season. Trying to fill the void of Delvin Cook. Who went for 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns. So, or, you know, almost 1,500 yards. Um... I do like, uh, so you lose Adam Thielen, but you replace him with rookie Jordan Addison, who had an incredible toe-tapping sideline catch that was ruled incomplete, but it looked good on replay. Um, for the Seahawks, Drew Locke looked all right. Had a 13-yard touchdown pass in between three defenders. Good throw in traffic by Drew Locke. Um, but he did have an interception later. Um, but another touchdown as well. Two touchdowns, one pick. Uh, so Drew Locke, a good backup, you know, but Geno Smith, definitely the starter there. Jackson Smith and Jigba there for the Seahawks. Kenneth Walker, uh, Charbonnet at running back. Let me pull up the Seahawks, but the Seahawks, I don't think they take a step back. A lot of people probably assume that they will. I don't think so at all. I think they contend for that division. I mean, the Niners probably win it, but you never know with the Niners quarterback situation. You know, as of right now, I got the Seahawks winning nine or ten games, you know, being just as good as they were last year. You add Jackson Smith and Jigba to Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, that's that's a lot of weapons at the receiver position, you know. And then uh, you got Noah Fant, Will Disley at tight end, Kenneth Walker, rookie Zach Charbonnet at running back. Not to, you know, can't forget about DJ Dallas. So Seahawks have a lot of talent on that offense. Then you got Bobby Wagner returning. You got Quandre Diggs, uh, Tariq Woolen. How about rookie Devin Witherspoon? Um, you know, they're building something in Seattle for sure. Uchenna and Wosu. If you had told me this two years ago when they were getting rid of Russell Wilson, that they were going to be this uh, talented, this deep, I would be like, I wouldn't have believed it. I thought they were heading for a rebuild. But Pete Carroll has done an excellent job there in Seattle of keeping everything you know, keeping them competing. And he told Quandre Diggs that was going to happen. I didn't believe him. Um, and so credit to Pete Carroll and John Schneider there for keeping them, you know. No one expected the Seahawks to make the playoffs last year. For the Vikings, I do expect them. I mean, the NFC North is wide-ass open, right? Um, with Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, probably the best receiver in the NFL. Um, the Vikings are are definitely a threat to win the division again. Now, I I look at it and I say there has to be a drop-off from Dalvin Cook, but they won 13 games last year. So they could still win 9 or 10 games, you know, um, with Justin Jefferson, rookie Jordan Addison, K.J. Osborne, T.J. Hawkinson, you know, Alexander Madison, Kirk Cousins, uh, Ty Chandler would be my running back too. They have Kenny and Wangwu, but I would have Ty Chandler. Uh, you know, rookie Makai Blackman, who is likely to start 
for the Vikings at corner. That's where they could be weak. You know, Caleb Evans, Makai Blackman, Byron Murphy. They could be a little weak at that corner spot. Uh, they did lose. You know, they lose. They lost a lot as far as talent on the defensive side of the ball. They lost uh, Hendricks, Eric Hendricks, I believe. They lost. Um, let me pull them up here real quick. They lost uh, Dalvin Tomlinson, Zadarius Smith, veteran Patrick Peterson. So, and they were 31st in yards allowed last year. But the good news is they are bringing in defensive coordinator Brian Flores, who if anyone can fix a defense, it's him. So we'll see. The Vikings should be a solid nine-win team unless the bottom falls out. Um, but I don't expect it to in a, in a wide-open division. The Packers are worse. The Bears are probably a little bit better. The Lions are probably a little bit better, but we'll see on Jared Goff. You know, Jared Goff, the quarterback, is really the, the key to making everything run right. Let's go Packers, Bengals, Friday night preseason game. We get to see Jordan Love as the guy. Uh, completes a couple of short throws, uh, but on a third and seven, he misses a wide open rookie, Luke Musgrave, the tight end, high and wide on that throw. And so at that point, you're thinking there's Jordan Love with the inaccuracy and the inconsistency uh, with his arm you know but he does come back uh, on the next drive back-to-back -back throws to Romeo Dobbs to set up first and goal and then a nice nine-yard touchdown pass with touch to beat Sidney Jones on the play so Jordan Love did show some potential in the preseason game 7 of 10 for 46 yards and a touchdown Packers rookie quarterback fifth round pick Sean Clifford I don't know why this guy got drafted Sean Clifford out of Penn State, he should have gone undrafted. And I think that you see a lot of teams reaching for quarterbacks this year because of the Brock Purdy effect. If Mr. Irrelevant can take the Niners into the deep into the playoffs, then what late round quarterback, you know, you're going to take flyers on all the late round quarterbacks. Sean Clifford's one that I think should have gone undrafted. Uh, he throws two picks in this game. Uh, I just don't think he's any good. Uh, he does throw a five-yard touchdown pass to tight end Tyler Davis. Unfortunately for the Packers, tight end Tyler Davis tears his ACL and is done for the season. And that's the worst thing about preseason games is you love the, the uh, ability to get out there and play some football with the pads on, with the helmets on, actually get hit, you know, play some semi-serious football. But at the same time, the worst part of that is injuries. Luckily for Green Bay, they did draft two tight ends this year in Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft. Their two tight ends that they had last year both went to the Bears in Robert Tanyan and Mercedes Lewis. So looking at the Packers roster around Jordan Love, outside of the running back position where you've got veteran Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, two solid guys. Uh, you know, among the best running back duos in the NFL. Outside of that, you've got youth, extreme youth everywhere. You've got second year wide receivers are your two number one, you know, two top guys are only in their second year. Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs. Then you've got rookies, Jaden Reed, my guy out of MSU, big fan of Jaden Reed. And then rookie Dontavian Wicks, I believe out of Virginia. Um, who I like as well, but two rookies and then two second-year guys. Your veteran on the receiving, uh, I mean, even S Samari Toure is in his second year. So, Samari Toure, so very young offense there in Green Bay, outside of the running back room. More pressure on Matt LaFleur to get, you know, so production out of this offense. It's easy to... to sit back and bask in the glory of Aaron Rodgers when he's making every throw out there. Now is the serious time for Matt LaFleur to show I can develop Jordan Love. I can get the most out of this offense, and we'll see. If I'm the Packers, I'm, I'm a run-heavy offense. I'm running it through Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, play action, roll out off of it, Give jo get Jordan Love out in the open space where he can threaten with his legs, clearly defined throwing uh, throwing windows, passing windows. That's what you want. 
I don't think you want to ask Jordan Love to be a straight-up drop-back passer. And you don't want to ask him to throw the ball all game because he'll, th- he'll throw the ball away. He'll be inaccurate at times. You want him, you want to cut down his throws, get him at, you know, 25, 30 throws a game and run the ball, you know, even less. Like if you can limit his, you know, throwing, that's good. That's good news for the Packers. So we'll see. Um, you know, their defense is good, not great in my opinion. Uh, I don't think it's a top 10 unit uh you know you got Kenny Clark you got Devontae Wyatt Preston Smith Devondre Campbell Quay Walker Rashawn Gary Jair Alexander Darnell Savage Rudy Ford Razul Douglas Lucas Van Ness the rookie uh Justin Hollins but I think Joe Barry's got his hands full this year and I don't think it's a top 10 unit so the offense is going to be pressure on that that's why I'm not very high on the Packers this year. I got them winning five or six games. That's that's about as high as I can put them in a in a weak division, really. And I just don't see them. I don't think they're very talented. So uh, we'll see. Maybe Jordan Love proves me wrong. Maybe Matt Lafleur proves me wrong. Maybe Aaron Jones has an MVP type season and makes and tells me to shut the hell up. For the Bengals, um, it's all about Joe Burrow. Uh, how soon will he be back? Will he miss any time? Can they get him out there week one? Jamar Chase said recently, you know, telling Burrow to, you know, if you wait till week five, we're good. And I, I wouldn't do that. The AFC North is so competitive this year that if Joe Burrow misses any time and you got to, I mean, who's their backup? Trevor Simeon, Jake Browning. No thanks on either of those guys. I'm a Bears fan. I saw Trevor Simeon in Chicago. He's trash. He sucks. So you don't have a, a veteran, a solid backup. So you need Joe Burrow. You know, I think if you start Trevor Simeon or Jake Browning, you're one and three or zero oh and four. I mean, two and two at best. You need Joe Burrow if you're the Bengals. Um. But if you have a healthy Joe Burrow, you've got Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. You've got rookie Charlie Jones, who I like. Andre Isovas. I don't know how the hell you say that name. He he showed flashes in the preseason game. Almost made a hell of a catch in the end zone. Um, Irv Smith Jr. I really like. Just interviewed his dad, Irv Smith Sr., the former Notre Dame and New Orleans Saints tight end. He's a great guy. Irv Smith Jr., you know, uh, if he can stay healthy, he's a very good talent. And I hope he stays healthy because he'll get a lot of uh, opportunity in that Bengals offense. Uh, Joe Mixon. How about fifth-round rookie Chase Brown out of Illinois? If you watch college football, watch any Big Ten, you would see Chase Brown jumping off the screen. He was a monster at Illinois. Uh We'll see if he can step into that backup running back spot behind Joe Mixon. Maybe he's a potential starter here. We'll see. Excellent value for a fifth-round pick. Uh, good to see Logan Wilson get his contract this offseason. It wasn't a hold in the Super Bowl. That was bullshit. Matthew Stafford bailout. Evan McPherson looks in uh, midseason form. He was killing it in the preseason. Uh, four for four on field goals. So, that's that game. Uh, let's go Giants-Lions. Uh, you know, the Lions are interesting. and Let's talk about the Lions here. Nate Sudfeld throwing multiple picks in this game. Uh, Nate Sudfeld sucks. Um, so, let's not dwell on him too much. It's not about Nate Sudfeld. It's about Jared Goff. It's about this... You know, the quarterback position. That, to me, this Lions team is built the right way. It's built through the trenches. It's built with football guys. It's got former football players all throughout the coaching staff, including the head coach, Dan Campbell. He seems like a football guy. He knows you got Rick Spielman. And uh, who's the GM over there? Brad Holmes. Um, So they seem to know what they're doing. But 
the draft confused me uh, in the fact that I did not understand the Lions, in my opinion, reaching for Jameer Gibbs. I think you could have got Gibbs back in the 20s or the 30s. The only running back in that draft class worthy of a top 15 pick, in my opinion, was B. John Robinson. And I like the running back position. I like Jameer Gibbs. But tell me this, Lions fans. What can Jameer Gibbs give you that Devon A-Chain can't give you? And Devon A-Chain was what? A third round pick? Maybe I'm just lower on Gibbs than I should be. But I look at Jameer Gibbs as simply a DeAndre Swift replacement. I would have kept DeAndre Swift. I know he's had trouble staying healthy, but the Eagles like what they got in Swift so far. And I'm I'm not a believer in, you look at what Jamal Williams did last year. If I'm the Lions, I run it back with not only Jamal Williams, but DeAndre Swift as well. I, I see no need to switch it up. But instead... They go with David Montgomery, who I'm still pissed the Bears got rid of. I love I love me some David Montgomery. Behind this offensive line, I think David Montgomery has a career season statistically. And he's the running back number one, in my opinion. Jameer Gibbs, that's why I don't like the pick. You're talking about 12 overall for, in my opinion, the number two running back. That's the role Swift played. He's a pass-catching running back. I don't see Gibbs carrying the ball a lot. David Montgomery is going to be your running back. Jameer Gibbs is going to be your receiving running back, in my opinion. He's going to be on the outside. He's going to be catching passes. He has talent in that regard, but so did DeAndre Swift. Uh, maybe better, probably better than DeAndre Swift as a receiving back, but 12th overall? I don't know about that. Uh, then... You reach for Jack Campbell out of Iowa, which look at everyone's draft boards. Their, their first round, their top 30 picks. Nobody had Jack Campbell in the top 30. I'm sorry. And maybe the Lions know something we don't, and he works out and he's Brian Erlacher, or he's a, a lockdown franchise linebacker. Leader, captain of the defense. If that's what he turns out to be, then I'll shut up and eat my words. But I think it's a reach. The uh, How about Sam Laporta over Michael Mayer? Do you guys like that one? Seems to me the Lions are just in love with Iowa guys. Isn't Dan Campbell from Iowa? Let me look, let me look this up. Dan Campbell, I think he's from Iowa. And, uh, no, he's not. He's from Texas a and I'm wrong on that one. But I don't know why the Lions fucking love these Iowa guys, but they seem to. Now, I will give them credit. Brian Branch is a hell of a pick. At pick number 45 overall in the second round, Brian Branch should have never fallen out of the first round. He's a hell of a hard hit in safety. The Lions love him already. Excellent pick. Excellent value. You got nothing bad to say there. I also like seventh round pick wide receiver Antoine Green out of North Carolina. He could end up being something for the Lions. So I like those two picks. I don't like Hendon Hooker in the third round. I think that's a waste of a pick. I like Malik Willis more than I like Hendon Hooker. Um, I just I don't think Hendon Hooker's skill set translates to the NFL. You know, uh, I like uh, Hendon Hooker. Reminds me, he's about the same as the Patriot guy who we just talked about, uh, Malik Cunningham, in my opinion. I just don't think Hendon Hooker's an NFL uh, guy. But anyways, the Lions-Giants preseason game. Uh, Lions I win 21-16. Um, you know, not. I mean, it's preseason week one, nothing to... To overreact about 21 16 win. Um, Jameer Gibbs combines for 37 yards. How about the Giants adding Cole Beasley? Uh, what's his name? Brian Dable was the Bills OC when Cole Beasley was there. So some familiarity there. 
uh, gives uh, Daniel Jones, you know, another guy, another reliable veteran pass catching weapon. Um, Julian Aquero record Aquero records three sacks in this game. Uh, Giants, I, I like the Giants. I uh, Darren Waller is an excellent add. Um, Saquon Barkley's back. I love that. You know, hopefully they give him a long-term deal if he balls out this year, which they should have this last year. I mean, it was best statistical season since his rookie year, and he had one of the best rookie years of all time. Um, Jalen Hyatt, I like that pick. Paris Campbell comes in. Um... Darren Waller, like I said, uh, you know, I, I'm a big Aziz Ojolari fan. Kayvon Thibodeau is a hell of a pass rusher. Uh, I think the Giants, Adoree Jackson, I like that. I think the Giants are uh, a wild card team once again. I think they make the playoffs. I think they're the second best team in the NFC East ahead of the Cowboys. So I got the Giants winning Win range, uh, their potential, they could win 11 games, but they could also win nine games and be nine and eight. I, I do think they have a winning record, and I think they make the playoffs. Uh, so that's the Giants for you. Uh, let's go Falcons, Dolphins. Um, no, uh, did Desmond Ritter play in this game? I don't think he did. Uh, I don't think he he played in this game. No, they were playing Logan Woodside all game. Uh, Skylar Thompson with three turnovers. Mike White did okay. Threw a pick. Dolphins lose 19-3 to Atlanta. Uh, B. John Robinson's the key in Atlanta. Uh, you know, you got a lot of talent on that Falcons offense. The big question is quarterback. You got Drake London. You got Kyle Pitts. You got B. John Robinson. Um, can Desmond Ritter get the most out of that talent? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, so he's got to prove me wrong there. But a lot of talent on that offense. I mean, yeah. I like Tyler Algier. He's the first thousand yard run, rusher for the Falcons in, in how long? And then they go and trade and take Bijan. I was a little bit confused by that. I would have ran it back with, with Algier, but Bijan is a hell of a talent. So I can understand that. Um, but, uh,. Where's Algiers' stats on here? But I mean, a thousand, a thousand yard rusher for the first time since uh, Devontae Freeman. So interesting decisions there in Atlanta. I do. I mean, you add Bud Dupree, you add Calais Campbell, uh, David Onyemata, Caden uh, Ellis. And you bring in uh, Ryan Nielsen, the former Saints D-line coach. So adding to that rivalry, you know, of Saints-Falcons. And uh, it's going to be an interesting year in Atlanta. And again, another division that's wide-ass open is the NFC South. Uh, how about Eddie Goldman unretiring? Coming back. See what he can do. Lorenzo Carter re-signed. Jeff Okuda. And Mike Hughes come from the Lions. Jesse Bates, excellent addition from the Bengals. Um, I like uh, fourth round pick corner Clark Phillips, as well. He's a he's a future starter in my opinion. So, good good value pick there. Uh, for Miami, I mean uh, Dolphins. It's all about very tough division. All about Tua staying healthy. Uh, they were in the conversation to get Dalvin Cook. They didn't get him. I really like the rookie, Devon A. Chain. Uh, man, they got a lot of speed. You know, you talk about Raheem Mostert, Devon A. Chain, Jalen Waddell, Tyreek Hill, uh, you know, Eric Ezukanma. 
they got speed, man. Uh, then you add Jalen Ramsey to Xavier and Howard. Vic Fangio is the defensive coordinator. Vic Fangio is a hell of a defensive coordinator. I know this from when he was on the Bears, and we had the best defense in football. Khalil Mack's first year there. Um, and the Bears won the division. Um, and the season ended on Cody Parkey not being able to kick. Uh, so Dolphins, high expectations. Big question for Miami is can Tua stay healthy? They got the weapons to do it. Can Tua stay healthy? Can they co go into the playoffs healthy? See what Tua can do in the playoffs and see how far they can go. But you got to go through the Jets. You got to go through the Bills. I think the Dolphins on paper, I got the Dolphins finishing third in that division with the Patriots right on their heels. So can they get past the Jets and the Bills? That's the big question. Let's go Steelers, Bucks. Kenny Pickett fires a 33 yard touchdown pass to George Pickens. I, you know, you got to like, if you're a Steelers fan, you got to like drafting the quarterback and a stud receiver in the same draft class so they can come up together. And I've been saying it, George Pickens is a fucking monster. Uh, I know receiver talent. I loved DK Metcalf coming out, and somehow he fell. I loved A.J. Brown coming out, and somehow he fell. And I love George Pickens coming out. Somehow he fell. I wanted George Pickens on the Bears. My Bears took Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker instead. I love Brisker, but I would have taken Pickens over Kyler Gordon. Uh, Pickens is a monster, and he's going to be an absolute star this year. I'm not a huge Kenny Pickett fan, but with a weapon like George Pickens, with Pat Fryermuth, with uh, Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris, there's no reason that Kenny Pickett can't have a successful season and uh, maybe get these Steelers back into the playoffs. Um, good backup in Mitch Trubisky. You know, say what you want about Mitch Trubisky. He's probably not a starter in the NFL, but he's a good backup. You know, he can come in there and, and keep you afloat. Better than Mason Rudolph. Uh, I'll tell you that much. Um, how about Allen Robinson coming in? You know, less pressure on Allen Robinson. Right now, they got him slated as wide receiver three. So not as much expectation for him coming off, what, a career low season last year with the Rams. Two years in a row now with Allen Robinson, uh, where he's really not done much. Um, you know, so... Looking right here, Allen Robinson, not seeing it, but I'll pull up his stats. Uh, he just hasn't done much for for two years now. I mean, the, Justin Fields' rookie year, he didn't do shit in Chicago. That's why he got uh, cut. Um, 33 catches last year for three touchdowns. Um... I guess in 2017, he only caught one one catch. Only played in one game. Got hurt. Uh, but in games, that I mean, he played in 10 games last year. Less than his rookie year. His rookie year, he had 48 catches. But yeah, he's had under 40 catches two years in a row. So we'll see after 102 catches in 2020. So Allen Robinson might be washed, but... You know, we'll see how he does his third option there in Pittsburgh. Um, the Bucks, Baker Mayfield doing his thing. I think he wins. He's already been named the starter, which is good news for Tampa Bay because Kyle Trask is not it. He might be an all right backup, but Baker Mayfield gives you that starter, that starting quarterback swag, that veteran. He's got. He's led a team to the playoffs. He's won a playoff game before. So he gives you that eight-yard touchdown pass to sixth-round rookie wide receiver Trey Palmer, who I like. Good value pick there with Trey Palmer. Um, you know, the Bucks have talent too. I mean, uh, you've got Baker Mayfield, which is kind of a question mark based on the season he had last year or the last two years. But he's got a fresh start in Tampa Bay with an opportunity to – you know, 
to start over. And you've got Mike Evans, you've got Chris Godwin, you've got Trey Palmer, you've got Kate Otten, you've got Rashad White, you know. Um, you've got a good defense behind you, you know, with Shaq Barrett, Levante David, Devin White, Joe Tryon, Vita Vea, you know, rookie Kalija Kansi or Kalia Kansi out of Pitt, um, Antoine Winfield Jr., Carlton Davis. You know, so you've got what there's talent there in Tampa Bay. If Baker can do his thing in a wide open division, maybe the Bucks eight or nine wins is doable, and maybe that's enough to get you into the playoffs. It was last year eight eight and nine Bucks got into the playoff, won the division last year. So I think the Saints win that division, but the Bucks, I would think I have the Bucks second. Uh, but my pegs over here say otherwise. Uh, I'm going to have to update that. As of right now, I got the Bucks going 4-13 and 13 or 5-12. and 12. I'm going to have to update that because they're better than that. They're at least a 6 or 7 win team. So it's going to be a very interesting NFC South. Uh, and I just love that we get the chance to talk about this shit. Now that preseason's here, uh, I don't, I'm not really going to spend too much time talking about the preseason games themselves because who cares, you know? Uh, it's just preseason. Uh, how about the undrafted rookie wide receiver Cade Warner, son of the Hall of Fame quarterback Kurt Warner, making a catch for the Bucks, One catch, 10 yards. I doubt he makes the team, though. Just a nice story. Nice to see. Kurt Warner at the game supporting his son. Let's go Commanders, Browns. Uh, big question here is Sam Howell. And then a lot of pressure on Den on uh, Cleveland with Deshaun Watson and all the talent they got in a very tough division, the AFC North, but the Browns need to make the playoffs. Deshaun Watson's got a huge-ass contract. Uh, people wonder if he is still the same guy that led the Texans to the second round of the playoffs and had the Texans up 24 to nothing on the Chiefs in the divisional round. Blew that lead, but Deshaun Watson in Houston was an absolute baller, one of the best quarterbacks in the entire league. Can he get back to that this year in Cleveland? I think he can. I'm a big Deshaun Watson fan. As far as his talent, I wanted the Bears to draft him out of Clemson. You know, going back-to-back -back national championship games against Bama, beating them the second time. Uh, so can he get back to that? I think he can. The big question for the commanders, in my opinion, is that quarterback, and that's Sam Howell. Um, do I – I'm not the biggest fan of Sam Howell. Uh, I, I don't think that his skill set really translates to the NFL game. But he's a pretty good athlete. You know, which helps. Uh, he's got talent around him, which definitely helps. I mean, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, Deami Brown. That right there is fucking really good. Then you got Brian Robinson at running back, Antonio Gibson, Logan Thompson, or Logan Thomas, and John Bates at tight end, even Cole Turner. Uh, so. And then that defense is nasty. I mean, look at that D-line. Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, Chase Young. You know, so Eric Bieniemy coaching up the offense, calling the offensive plays. We'll see if he has similar success like he had in Kansas City for all those years with Patrick Mahomes. More pressure on Bieniemy to get it done and a lot of pressure on Ron Rivera who needs to have a needs to make the playoffs, have a winning season to keep his job, really. And uh, if I'm the commanders, man, just, I've been saying it for years, let Ron Rivera go and get in. With Eric Bieniemy there as assistant head coach, just give him the job. Uh, but we'll see how they do this year. We'll see how the offense performs this year with Eric Bieniemy calling the plays and all that. Uh, looking at the Browns real quick. Um, like I said, the Browns can make the playoffs, but it's such a 
tough division. I mean, who's the worst team in the AFC North? Think about that for, for a second. Is it the Steelers? We just talked about how much talent they have. Is it the Browns? Let's quickly go over um, Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Elijah Moore, Cedric, rookie Cedric Tillman, who I like out of Tennessee, um, David Njoku, Nick Chubb, Deshaun Watson, looking for a bounce back year, Miles Garrett, Dalvin Tomlinson, Zadarius Smith, Awosu Koromoa, uh, Taki Taki, Denzel Ward, Grant Delpit, Juan Thornhill, Greg Newsom. You know, Brown's got talent. Cade York. Uh, it's tough on the Browns. Looking at my predictions here, AFC North. So this is how I have the AFC North. This is how tough it is. I got the Ravens at 11 and 6, the Bengals at 10 and 7, and the Browns and Steelers both at 9 and 8. Every team in the AFC North with a winning record. I mean, like I said, it's a good question. Who's going to finish last place in that division? I don't know. And if that's how it falls out, like what I just said, the Browns and Steelers would both both miss the playoffs, and neither both franchises expect to make the playoffs. So, but the Bengals and Ravens appear like the class of the division. So it's something's got to give in the AFC North and the AFC East. Something's got to give, and so it's going to be so much fun to see how this all breaks down this year. I can't wait for the regular season to get kicked off. And uh, see how it all unfolds because every year we're surprised. And uh, this year I feel like there's going to be a lot of surprises. Broncos Cardinals played and uh, Russell Wilson, the veteran. You don't always see the veteran quarterback playing in the preseason. But Russell Wilson plays, starts out kind of slow, uh, settling for you know a couple field goals. But then gets it going, and it was surprising. The Cardinals were showing, were sending a cover zero blitz at Russell Wilson. He finally burned him, hitting Jerry Judy for a 21 yard touchdown. It's interesting to see a team do cover zero in the preseason. Um, but good on Russell Wilson for seeing it uh, and beating it, you know. And. Uh, with Sean Payton there, Sean Payton's the best coach they could have hired to fix Russell Wilson and fix the Broncos' offense. Sean Payton, I believe, turns this team around quick. And in my opinion, I have the Broncos making the playoffs this year. Uh, a tough division, at least the top three. Who knows about the Raiders? I think they have a bad year. But the Chiefs are the class of the division, and it's going to be up to the Broncos and Chargers fighting over that wild card spot. And I think the Broncos get it. That's not a shot at Justin Herbert. That's a shot at head coach uh, Brandon Staley. I'm not a Brandon Staley fan at all. And I think Sean Payton I have the utmost respect for. Andy Reid as well. But Brandon Staley and Josh McDaniel are the two bad head coaches there. So... Uh, we'll see if coaching matters that much, if, if Russell Wilson can bounce back. You know, he hasn't had really a good season in two years now and get it going there in Denver. Um, Cardinals, Cardinals are going to be bad. Uh, sounds like Colt McCoy is going to start week one. And how soon will Kyler Murray be back? They've got a pretty bad roster overall. I think the Cardinals... Are, have a have a tough season. I got them at four wins right now, four and thirteen. It's not going to be a good year for the Cardinals, I don't think. Um, let's go Colts Bills. Anthony Richardson has been named the Week One starter. He uh, at t you know made a couple of mistakes you know in his preseason debut, but he also threw, had a really nice pass to Alec Pierce that would have been a touchdown, but Pierce dropped it. Alec Pierce has to make that catch. Anthony Richardson, you see why he's 
you know, got so much hype around him. The potential, the athletic ability, the arm strength, the quick release, the ability to make all the throws. Anthony Richardson is a monster. And uh, it's I like that the Colts are starting him week one. Gardner Minshew sucks. I mean, he's an all right backup. But as a starter, he's 2-10 since 2020. Some of you might say uh, wins and losses is not a quarterback stat. I disagree strongly. I, I strongly believe that it is a quarterback stat. Uh, quarterbacks touch the ball every play on offense. They make all the throws. They make all the audibles of the line. They have the ability to change the plays. They see where the blitz is coming from. They can get the ball out. They're the orchestrators of the offense. How the hell is a win and loss record not on the quarterback? When goalies have a win loss record, you know, in hockey and soccer, and pitchers have a win loss record, but quarterbacks don't, give me a break. So, uh, Anthony Richardson is the best quarterback on this roster, and I am looking forward to seeing him develop. And really get thrown into the fire and see how he handles it. Uh, Colts, I think it's going to be a long year. Jonathan Taylor's upset. You know, we'll see how that situation unfolds. Jim Irsay, you know, stupidly bringing himself into that and pissing off Jonathan Taylor. Um, but they need Jonathan Taylor if they're going to have any success this year at all. The offensive line needs to have a much better year. But they need Jonathan Taylor. Anthony Richardson needs Jonathan Taylor. You take Jonathan Taylor away, who they got? Zach Moss, rookie Evan Hole, Kenyon Drake. Come on now. None of those guys are starters. And Jonathan Taylor is one of the best running backs in the entire league. So, uh, for the Bills, they were my favorites to win the AFC East until the Jets just added Dalvin Cook. Now the Jets are my favorite to win the AFC East. I was pleading with the Bills that they should sign Dalvin Cook. They had no interest in it. You know, good. What's the, you know, I don't understand it. Uh, the Bills back in the day, what would they have? Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, Andre Reid. That's why they went to four straight Super Bowls. Bruce Smith, that defense. Uh, but they needed Thurman Thomas. They weren't doing that without Thurman. And all right, James Cook. I like James Cook, you know. But I'd rather have uh, Dalvin Cook. And Damian Harris isn't that good. Damian Harris lost his starting job to Ramondre Stevenson. I like Ramondre Stevenson. I used to like Damian Harris. But if you can't beat out Ramondre Stevenson, you're a backup running back. So they're asking a lot out of James Cook this year in Buffalo. Uh, but he had a good preseason, nice touchdown run. So maybe James Cook can step up and be the guy. Interesting now that you got the Cook brothers in the AFC East. That's going to be fun to watch. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, excellent addition in Buffalo. Justin Shorter, I really like. Fifth-round pick, wide receiver out of Florida. I like Gabe Davis, Stephon Diggs, Khalil Shakir. Keep an eye on Justin Shorter. Uh, big body receiver. Throw it up to him, go get it. Could be Josh Allen's best friend uh, at some point this year. Vaughn Miller. Leonard Floyd, Gregory Rousseau, Ed Oliver, uh, Tredavious White, you know, Bill's defense. Uh, top 10, are they going to be, you know, Sean McDermott calling defensive plays now instead of Leslie Frazier who stepped down? So it's going to be an interesting year in Buffalo. I think now they don't win the division, and if that happens, week one's huge. That Jets-Bills game, week one, is going to be huge in New York. Jets have to win that. If they don't win that, then the best they can do is a split. And uh, it's going to be an interesting year in the very difficult AFC East. Titans-Bears. Uh, Justin Fields and that Bears offense looked explosive. Two pretty much screen passes. A lot of people make it a big deal about Justin Fields throwing the ball down the field. Who the hell cares if you're going for 50, 60-yard plays and putting up points? Who gives a shit? Uh, and two explosive plays for the Bears offense. DJ Moore. First, you know, Bears trade the number one overall pick to the Panthers for DJ Moore. 
First time he touches the ball in a Bears uniform in a Bears game, goes 62 yards for a touchdown. DJ Moore is fucking a stud. Absolutely special. Loved him in Carolina. Loved that game-winning play he made with the Panthers, and then they docked him for taking his helmet off. Get the hell out of here, NFL. Khalil Herbert touches the ball, goes 56 yards for a touchdown on a screen. Great play by Fields just to avoid the rush. Buy some time and get the ball out to Khalil Herbert. No one's talking about that. All they want to do is hate on on Fields for checkdowns and screen passes. They don't, you know, they don't want to give him any credit for his athletic ability and and avoiding the rush and all the rushing yards he put up last year with a terrible team around him, a terrible O line, terrible receivers outside of Darnell Mooney. But he don't get any credit for any of that. So, big year for the Bears. Big year for Justin Fields. You got DJ Moore. You got Darnell Mooney. You got Chase Claypool. You got Robert Tanyan and Cole Komet. So, this is the year. Big year for Justin Fields to, to take the next step. Really have a, you know, win more. And have a better year as a quarterback. Titans, uh, a lot of people are discounting the Titans, acting like they're not any good anymore. Uh, that you know, but you got Ryan Tannehill, you got Derrick Henry, you got DeAndre Hopkins, you got Traylon Burks. Come on now, that's a lot of talent. That's some star power right there. Uh, keep an eye on the Titans. Jeffrey Simmons, Kevin Byard, hashtag just a fan. Titans are just as much a threat. You know, I think the Titans make the wild card. I think the Jags probably win that division. But the Titans, if healthy, can fight with the Jags right down to the final week for that, for that play, uh, for that division. Um, let's go to Jets Panthers. Aaron Rodgers doesn't play. Zach Wilson has looked pretty good so far this preseason, and Aaron Rodgers being his mentor, Zach Wilson going back to the backup quarterback and learning and sitting behind Aaron Rodgers might be the best thing that ever happened to Zach Wilson. And he seems to enjoy it. Aaron Rodgers was his favorite quarterback or is his favorite quarterback, was his favorite quarterback growing up. And it's awesome to see Zach Wilson so happy to to be behind Aaron Rodgers. He's always asking him questions. He seems excited about the opportunity to learn from Aaron Rodgers. For once, in a long-ass time, it seems like the Jets are making some smart decisions, you know? And this is their best year. I, you know, with the addition of Dalvin Cook, with Brees Hall coming back, with Garrett Wilson, Jets are absolutely loaded. And Aaron Rodgers is the X Factor for sure. The Jets can go as far as they want, man. The Jets can go to the Super Bowl. They really can. They can go win a championship. This might be the best supporting cast that Aaron Rodgers has ever had. And I say that mostly talking about, I mean, they got a great offensive side of the ball. They really do. It's up there. Uh, He had some great offenses in Green Bay. But the defense, that Jets defense is nasty. They might be, they could be a top five defense. You know, all this talk is assuming that these teams stay healthy. But that Jets defense is nasty. And you look at Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed as your two cornerstone, you know, defensive backs. And then you've got Quinnen Williams, who has just been wrecking shit on that D-line. Uh, you know, I don't know. I like this Jets team a lot. So, I really like the addition of Dalvin Cook. That allows... The Jets to take their time with Brees Hall. They don't have to rush him back from the major injury he had last year. They can ease him in, wait till he's fully healthy. You know, Dalvin Cook and Aaron Rodgers is going to love, absolutely love having Dalvin Cook in that backfield. And uh, then you got Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, uh, Corey Davis, McCole Hardman, um, Randall Cobb. You got a lot of talent there. That's all I'm saying. So, it's going to be very interesting with the Jets this year. Uh, For the Panthers, Bryce Young. Matt Corral struggled. He's he's not very good in my opinion. But Bryce Young, I don't think the Panthers are going to be very good this year. 
Um, I do like Brian Burns. I like some of what the Panthers are doing, but they're a couple years away. They need to build around Bryce Young, and then they can talk about it. They're in a bad division, and I just don't see the Panthers, you know. I do like Jonathan Mingo. Excellent addition, second-round pick. Adam Thielen's a good addition. Um, Miles Sanders is good. But, you know, all in all, I think they're a six or seven win team. So we'll see if they can prove me wrong this year. You know, it's a rookie quarterback. You're going to have growing pains. Jags Cowboys. Jags are my favorite to win the AFC South. Um, you know, uh, Trevor Lawrence is going to be an absolute monster. You know, you look at that comeback win against the Chargers in the playoffs. You look at his performances. In the second half of the last season, the Jags really got going, and now you add uh, Calvin Ridley to all that. That's dangerous. That's scary. Um, look out for the Jags this year. You know, some people are going a little too crazy with it, predicting them to win 13, 14 games. I'm not going to go that crazy. I don't really care as long as you win the division. You can win 10 or 11. I could give a shit. But... The goal is to be playing your best football when you get to the playoffs. Trevor Lawrence has already proven he can win a playoff game. And, uh, you know, get that home field, win the division, get a home playoff game, win a playoff game, and see how far you can go, you know, taking the next step. But Trevor Lawrence is everything in Jacksonville, you know. And so as long as he stays healthy and does his thing, Jags ceiling is the roof, as Michael Jordan would say. Um, Cowboys, I'm down on the Cowboys this year. Uh, I'm sorry, Dallas fans, but I they might make the playoffs. I got them going nine and eight. Um, I like you know their pass rush. I, I love Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs. I got Ceedee Lamb, Dak Prescott, Tony Pollard. Um, good tight ends. But tough division with the Eagles and the Giants. The Giants got better, in my opinion. The Eagles got better, in my opinion. Um, the Commanders got better. You know, did the Cowboys get that much better this offseason? I don't know. You know, and uh, Brandon Cooks, all right. Mozzie Smith. You know, but... We'll see on these Cowboys. I just, I think they struggle. Mike McCarthy calling plays. I think this is Mike McCarthy's last year as head coach. I think he gets fired. I would be, I would love to give Dak Prescott a better head coach, you know. So we'll see. And is Dak still the guy, right? We'll see on that too. Um, so, interesting year for the Cowboys for sure. Eagles, Ravens. Eagles, we all know about when healthy, when the when the regular season's going, the Eagles are, you know, right now you can pencil in Eagles 49ers NFC Championship game, you know. And if both teams are healthy, that's a toss-up game. Uh, for the Ravens, Ravens have, you know, Roquan Smith, Odell Beckham Jr., Zay Flowers, Lamar Jackson, happy with a new contract. If the Ravens are ever going to win the division, and go on a deep playoff run, it's this year. On paper, the Ravens have the talent to go to the Super Bowl. But can they do it? Can Lamar Jackson lead them there? Can John Harbaugh stay out of his way and uh, call good situational game management you know, decisions and not throw games away like he's done the last two years now, uh, being over-aggressive for no damn reason? Can... John Harbaugh, Lamar Jackson, all these guys work together, Mark Andrews, all those guys, and go deep in the playoffs. It starts with winning the division. You're not going to get into the playoffs. It's tough to get into the playoffs as a wild card and play all these road playoff games and go to the go to the conference championship game. You need to win the division. Uh, at the very least, just get into the playoffs fine as a wild card. But if you want to go on a deep run, 
like you're talking about, Ravens fans, you need to win the division. You need to outdo the Bengals and Joe Burrow. And Joe Burrow's a little nicked up. He might miss a game or two to start the season. Take advantage of that, Baltimore. Uh, take advantage of that because you're going to need everything you can get. Week two, Ravens at Bengals. You know, I, I know Joe Burrow wants to be back for that game. I know he does. Uh, but they're at the Browns week one. You know, so is Joe Burrow going to miss at Cleveland week one, which could be a loss if Joe Burrow don't play, which w- would be a loss if Joe Burrow don't play? Does he miss week two, the home opener against the Ravens, which would be a loss if Joe Burrow don't play? So the Bengals need Joe Burrow right away, weeks one and two. Otherwise, that's two division losses right off the bat. So I don't agree with Jamar Chase where you can just say, hey, Joe Burrow, get back for week five. No. You need him back as soon as fucking possible. I my prediction is Joe Burrow plays week one. Um because he knows how important he is to that team and I don't think he's as hurt as you know, I think it's all precautionary. I really do. And he wants a new contract. He doesn't want to aggravate nothing. He wants to be fully healthy going into the regular season. No need for him to be practicing or playing in the preseason. You know, all good. Um Chargers, Rams, Battle of L.A. Chargers are good. You know, Justin Herbert's the key. He got his new deal. Uh, Chargers in a tough division. Broncos should be better. Chargers, eight or nine wins, ten wins at most. You know, uh, might make the playoffs, might not. To me, the big thing that's holding them back is Brandon Staley. But I do like that they got Austin Eckler back. You know, he's led the NFL in rushing touchdowns you know, or in touchdowns the last two years in a row, combined touchdowns. Uh, Quentin Johnson is a hell of a draft pick. I mean, you've been talking about this for a while now, the Chargers' weapons. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, even Josh Palmer. Now you add Quentin Johnson, that's an embarrassment of riches. You know, so um, Chargers are going to be a threat for sure. Rams, I don't think so. Uh, Rams are going to suck this year. Um, we'll see on Stafford, you know, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, how good are they? Uh, but can Stafford stay healthy? Can Cooper Cup stay healthy? And outside of them, how much talent do they really have? You know, uh, Aaron Donald, yeah, but they lost Jalen Ramsey. You know, Rams are going through. They, they pushed off all their money, all their cap down the road. Now they're paying for it. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens to the Rams. Matthew Stafford. Doesn't want to renegotiate his contract. I believe he's playing his last season in the NFL. And so his, the Rams are in a bit of a limbo. And I don't think they're going to be very good. I think that's a seven-win team at best. And, you know, so we'll see on all that. Chiefs and Saints. The Saints are my pick to win the NFC South. Derek Carr looked great in the preseason, but I'm not basing it on that. I'm basing it on all the weapons around him. Alvin Kamara, I know he's suspended for, what, the first four games, uh, I believe. But uh, you got you added Jamal Williams, who can step in and fill in until Kamara's back. You've got uh, the rookie, uh, Kendra Miller. Alvin Kamara suspended three games. Uh you know, you've got Michael Thomas coming back. You've got Jimmy Graham, who, you know, how much is Jimmy Graham going to give you? I don't know, but Saints fans are probably happy to, you know, see a familiar face and a guy that used to be an absolute monster. And, you know, some familiarity there in, in that offense for Der- for Derek Carr. Sa- similar, same offense he was running with the Raiders. Uh, brings in Brian Edwards that he had success with there in Vegas. Jonathan Abram, right? Former Vegas Raider. Um, Brian Breezy, defensive tackle. Jake Hayner, some, some good depth he played in this preseason game. Uh, so we'll see on the Saints. Big, you know, for the Chiefs, uh, Matt Nagy taking over as offensive coordinator. Um Good luck with that, Chiefs. I know you got Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, but as a Bears fan, I'm going to tell you right now, Matt Nagy sucks, 
And it's not just as a Bears fan. Remember, last time Matt Nagy called play called plays for your Chiefs, what happened? Blew an 18-point lead in the playoffs to Marcus Mariota and the Titans. So, good luck with him. Uh, 49ers Raiders. Um, bring back Robbie Gold because you you used a third round. Or a, what pick did they use on this guy? Third round pick on a kicker, Jake Moody. And he misses both of his field goal attempts in the preseason game. I know Robbie Gold is 40 years old. But you're trying to win a championship, right, Niners? You're banking on playing important, you know, playoff games in January, right? Well, Robbie Gold's never missed a playoff kick. Bring him back. Jake, Mo Jake Moody's already proving himself as it's going to be a work in progress here. Uh, inconsistent. He had some issues at Michigan, especially, you know, in 2022. That damn near cost him, you know, a win or two. So, bring back Robbie Gold if you're smart, Niners. Niners were my pick to win the NFC this year. They, I, In my opinion, they would have beat the Eagles if they had a quarterback. And Brock Purdy don't get hurt. Uh, Trey Lance, struggling a little bit, uh, but also showing some improvement as well. And let's be patient. You know, you got guys like Dan Orlovsky who think they know who Trey Lance is already with, through five or six starts in his career pump the brakes you know Trey Lance is still developing he was always since the day he was drafted a long-term project that was going to take multiple years to develop last year would have been a big year for his development but he got hurt in week two and was done for the year is that Trey Lance's fault no so let's not overreact to a preseason game Let's wait and see how Trey Lance does the, the, the next two preseason games. And if he's on the roster this year, you know, we'll see if he gets a shot. We'll see if he can out. You know, I don't think Sam Darnold played that well. So who gets the backup quarterback spot? Is it Sam Darnold or, or is it Trey Lance? You know, I think Kyle Shanahan might be leaning Sam Darnold. But Trey Lance has potential. He needs to put Put it out there, on, you know, when he gets the opportunity. He needs to play better next week in the preseason when he gets his opportunity. Um, did throw a touchdown, but, you know, probably should have been intercepted. Duke Shelley had it in his hands, but let it go right to Ross Dwelly, who made the catch. So, we'll see. Raiders rookie Aiden O'Connell looked pretty good. And uh, Niners rookie Ronnie Bell. What is he, a seventh-round pick? He looked pretty good in that game, too, besides uh, letting the ball go through his hands for an interception. But, you know, um, Raiders, I don't expect much. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo, can he stay healthy is the number one question. He's been hurt so often in his career. Josh Jacobs is unhappy. Does he even play this year? Uh, you know, if Garoppolo gets hurt and or if Josh Jacobs don't play, the Raiders are fucked. And Josh McDaniels is trying his hardest to run Derek Carr and Josh Jacobs, your two best players, out of town. And he did the exact same thing in Denver when he got there, when he ran Jay Cutler and Brandon Marshall out of town. Josh McDaniels might be a hell of an offensive coordinator when he's in New England. He's not an NFL head coach, in my opinion. So that's about all I got for this week. Uh, we'll you know talk more in week two of the preseason. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Let me know what you think. Very, you know, a lot of stuff in there. So, you know, I mean, it, we'll see how the season goes. I'm excited. I can't wait for week one of the regular season. Preseason is just wetting my appetite, you know. I'm getting a little taste of it. Starters come out there and play for a, a drive or two or at most a quarter. Uh, I can't wait until all the starters are out there and we're playing meaningful football. And, uh you know, less than a month away from the opener, Chiefs and Lions in Arrowhead. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait uh, to see the Chiefs kick the Lions' ass on national TV. But this season is going to be amazing. Appreciate all the support, guys. I hope you like the, the rebrand, the sports league, the new logo. Uh, hit that subscribe, support, follow along all season long. Amanda's going to be coming on for a lot of episodes during the season. Uh, we should have a Ravens season preview episode out with a former player. So, 
Appreciate all you guys. Uh, have a great week. And peace out.